Paul, just picking up on this £10 billion spend in the month of July, a real headline number here, to what extent does this just represent the continual change in habits when people are doing more online shopping now, encouraged by learning these new behaviours in the pandemic, and they're just sticking to it rather than actually representing greater spending across the UK economy? I mean, that's definitely an accurate statement. I think that we're seeing the the changed behaviour that has happened over the last two years continue, even as stores have started to reopen across the United Kingdom. And as you said before, the number is pretty staggering, £10 billion in the month of July. That's a record July. It's a record month, except for the month of December, the Christmas period of last year, and up 60% since the pandemic started. I want to ask you about inflation because typically in the past we've seen that the internet can actually bring about more substitution and can keep a lid on some of the inflationary pressures where you may witness it in pricing. But in your report, you pointed out that uh, online prices started to increase since the start of the pandemic. And now if you look at the online inflation figures at 4.8% an increase compared with June last year. To what extent do you think that uh, internet shopping, e-commerce, will actually help contain pricing pressures this time round? Yeah, this was an interesting statistic in the report. It said that the online inflation was tracking about 4.8% compared to offline at 2.5%. It does not imply that the online pricing is more expensive. We're still seeing prices online generally less expensive than offline, but we are starting to see that the online pricing is, is moving a little bit faster. There's a couple of contributing factors that we see behind that. The first one is that the pandemic is continuing to impact on the global supply chains. And then secondly, is just the, the, the sheer surging in, in demand for, for online uh, and the online channels.